Takes it with the ward ability. Goes all the way in and will land it right on top of the race tower. Taking out both of the multi infernos. Both of the multi archer towers. Or none of that because it died? What? Welcome to the Picker Pass League for week three. It is Navi taking on Too Late for Shiver. This is probably one of Navi's most difficult matchups yet here in this tournament. And there's some very interesting restrictions on the match, which we'll go over in just a moment, that are starting to expand the further and further we go through the tournament. The more we go through this tournament, the more things they start to ban to make the attacking a little bit more difficulty slowly through we uh, so as we progress but if you guys haven't heard we've been putting out a bunch of sneak peeks talking about some upcoming stuff in the upcoming update and so this is a perfect opportunity to talk about that a little bit more in detail and get you guys' opinion on it because we've already seen that players like p castro who's live right now is what he's been doing with this maxed out hero equipment level 27 on the giant column in here level 27 of the frozen arrow and i mean we've been seeing him bounce back and forth there between frozen arrow and the healer puppet and it's kind of hard to tell what we should level up here and so i think we're all going to be keeping a close eye on what the pro players do especially the ones that like to wail out a little bit there and gem the updates all the way to max like right away and get all this max level equipment and so i am very curious to see what kind of equipment he's going to be running when we actually go into the update so we'll have the new option of the haste vial for the world champion and the hog puppet and both of them look really really strong i'll be honest with you they both look very very strong i don't know which one of the four equipment are going to be most widely used i i think the rc base equipment is already really really strong and so like the other stuff there would have to compete pretty heavily with that but it's like Pete Castro pretty much has this under control here just swarm the back side of the base there with Lalo has that word ability to power him through the town hall and then the healing tome to help him get past the town hall and get out of the poison unscathed and through a couple of red air bombs apparently as well in the back end so easy easy pick up here for Pete Castro a quick and easy triple for Navi and we'll, like I said, keep it a close eye on to him specifically to see what he does because he called Healer Puppet. He called Healer Puppet and started pushing it before anybody else. And now a lot of other players are starting to follow suit to what P. Castro did. And so that's where we'll be looking. And actually, uh, P. Castro, if you want more insight from P. Castro, he just put out a video over on the Navi Clash of Clans channel where he personally made a video and he ranked all the equipment and it's pretty insightful. So definitely check that out there if you haven't already. Okay, here are the bans for the tournament. Navi is team A. They are not allowed to use root riders or healers. On the other side, too late for a shiver got a little bit easier on the bands there, but they did lose their lava hounds, and obviously that means ice hounds as well. And Pekka. So they're gonna be probably staying to the ground here. And I, I guess banning Pekkas, is that also a ban of siege barracks? I'm not even sure about that. I, I know that when I try to use a Pekka to do my uh, clan games and try to get the one out of the siege barracks to count, it doesn't count. So if the game won't allow me to count a Pekka in my siege breaks to complete a clan game then i i don't know if the tournament should count it you know like consistency you know we let's talk consistency but a little lightning used to take out the defensive queen over to the side of the base there also got out the multi inferno multi archer tower and rage tower with that lightning the king quickly connects to it the queen dives in secures the tower takedown with level 12 frozen arrow and king does a pretty good job there off to the left side and you'll notice that we, while we're in this little bit of a debate with the with the hero equipment, people are still pushing the giant gauntlet. But if you guys didn't hear, the bug on the giant gauntlet is getting fixed. Previously, when you had the eternal tome affect the ward or the warden eternal tome affect the king, and then he popped his giant gauntlet afterwards, instead of just getting damage reduction, it was bugging out and giving him complete invulnerability. And so he was taking out like a massive, massive swath of the base while not slowing down to the slightest. And so now that is not going to happen. And so the giant column is nerfed significantly, but it is still one of the most powerful pieces of equipment in the game outside of all the warden equipment. So I think uh, we're still going to be seeing it widely used there. So it's a pretty safe one to go ahead and finish leveling up there until we get a final decisive 
uh, idea of where we should concentrate our resources. But I, I feel like most people, for most of us out there, when this Royal Champion equipment releases, I feel like most people should just kind of sit on the sidelines a little bit. Don't just dump a bunch of ore into any individual piece there and just kind of wait to see what the pro players are doing and then follow suit. Gaku also going to run Frozen Arrow, but they are probably not running the Hila Puppet because Hila Puppet is banned on their side as we discussed just a moment ago. So maybe they would opt to take it over Frozen Arrow if they had the option, but as it stands, they would end up taking a massive penalty in this tournament if they tried to, right? So let's maybe avoid that. However, you're going to run the Healing Tome of the Warden. Level 27 or 23 Frozen Arrow. Keep on working off the left of the base here. And because they can't use Root Riders, Gaku's got to put them away today. And they did take some pretty big hits there with their bands, right? Like, uh, the, the way that they draw the bands here for this tournament is at the start of the week, then all of the Team A side of the bracket end up with one ban, and all the Team B side of the bracket end up with a different ban. And so it's just kind of, did you end up on the right side, and did you end up getting a big disadvantage? And I feel like Na'Vi definitely did. Losing healers and losing Root Riders at the same time before Root Riders take their nerf, because if you guys didn't hear, Root Riders are getting nerfed. They are losing 600 HP, and I don't know if that's enough nerf. I think a lot of people were saying that it would have been better if they would have got a little bit of their... Would have, would have had increased housing space or something like that. I, I tend to agree. They, they tend to be as strong as they are because of the way that they, they work and how cheap they are. They're just basic functionality, not as much they're just sheer HP pool. But I, I guess they'll uh, have to mess with the balance there a little bit as they continue to have updates because it's nice that we're just getting some kind of a balance. We're getting a lot of new defense levels on very, very high impact defenses at the same time that they're nerfing a couple of things. And so I'm really hoping that it does lower the hit rates a little bit from where they are right now. But this isn't slowing Navi down. They are so versatile. They don't need to have the Root Riders carry them. They can break out the Lalo. And they can do everything with this because Lalo's not getting a nerf. So a lot of people have speculated that running the haste file in a spear walk would end up getting some insane value. And I tested it on the developer build. And I will tell you that it is not as strong as you would think. Not because the Roar Champion can't do a ton of damage, but if you're trying to do a spear walk, and continues to make the Road Champion invisible. And then she suddenly starts moving at a very, very, very rapid pace. Then you can't keep her invisible. She just keeps walking out of it. And so you end up losing a lot of value. However, I do think that the spear walk, where if you do it like you do if you do it like I did in my sneak peek video where I talked about it. I think it can be very powerful if you don't pop the Royal Champion ability during the Spirit Walk. If you recall her out before you pop her ability, then she can get some very, very good value like normal. But she does move faster when she runs the the, the Haze file because she is able to clear defenses just slightly faster, but you don't want to move too fast, otherwise she's very difficult to control. So that's my recommendation. If you want to use that attack, by all means, put the haste file on, but then don't pop her ability until after you end up redeploying her after the recall. So don't do it during the spirit walk. But this attack here kind of needs to get this town hall down. Is that dragon's gonna take it? Oh, nice dragon. That was very, very clutch right there. Queen breaks the wall. Uh, they are allowed to use healers. He's got level 11 frozen arrow right there, pushing a queen charge through. I don't know how she ended up on the inside of the base right there, but that's fine. She's going to break her way through. She can work her way through the defensive king. And this is where the frozen arrow is the strongest is when we engage defensive heroes. But unfortunately, she's under too much heat right now. She's going to go down. It looks like some healers will be taken out there as they transfer forward. But you know what? Those healers just saved a whole bunch of black air bombs from hitting that dragon right there. So maybe that was okay. RC stayed alive. So going to make his way past the defensive king. Cost him some time to get through the last defenses here. But he seems to be okay. He seems to be just fine here overall. We're going to pop that road champion ability, clear out some of the backside defenses. And it looks like overall we're looking pretty solid on this one. Down south here, looks like we got that archer chipping away here. Road champion does die, but the dragons will easily finish it off here. So it's triple. 
It's a triple for too late for Shiver. They're going to match the triples that Navi put up. And I told you this team is going to put up a fight in this war. And they definitely are. So nice job here to Royal AK-14. But we'll pass it back to Navi. We'll see if they can keep the triples rolling in. I feel like there's only a handful of attacks that are extremely consistent in the meta right now. And that is Queen Charge attacks, Lalo attacks, and Root Rider attacks. And so with the bands that Navi has, that means they are going to do a lot of Lalo. They're going to do a lot of Zap Lalo to be specific, but they could do Skelly Dota Lalo as well. The King breaks off uh, across the top of the base there towards the Town Hall. Does he get activated? Yeah, he does. And then he leaves it. Oh, thanks, thanks King. <laughs> All right, um, that's fine. That's fine. He's got the Golem down south there, providing the protection for the Queen. Golem's going to die out here, but the Queen is perfectly safe where she stands. And he can fight off that uh, Lava Hound and keep on working south. But I feel like he wants to put the Lalo into the very bottom of the base there to get the Queen the support that she needs. Get the Eagle Artillery down early, but also at the same time, want to get the Defensive World Champion engaged early and then blimp across to the Town Hall. So a Lalo from the south is going to be required to make this one work right. So we'll see how he handles it. The Queen pops her ability, gets the Monolith down. She's going to get the Eagle Artillery and the World Champion will pick up the Air Defense. So we can shift his Lalo a little bit further to the left there. He decides to go far, far left because the hero is able to get that value down there. And instead of going into the bottom side, he still goes after the closest approach to the World Champion and pops that Ward ability. And he gets a much safer approach with the Blimp from that angle as well. RC and Queen keep on moving. RC still has her ability, getting some cross taken there. But the Expo is hammered away against her. Switch over the Queen, claims her, but the multi is the last standing threat of the base here. And it looks like they got it under control, so he's got blues everywhere. It is a triple. He's not only got blues everywhere, but he's got three swag spells. He's got a couple of freezes and an extra invisibility that he can toss anywhere he wants. And he's got an extra world champion ability as well that he will pop right here and try to get down the abilities a little bit faster. But he couldn't hit all the abilities there. I think he ended up hitting the ground skill as he was stuck on, so... RC didn't really do a lot with that. Freezes can't really get him through any faster than he already has. But it is another triple here. And we'll see if Truly for Shiver can stay pace. Surge will go in next. We got Rocket Bloons. And you know what? <laughs> They're not allowed to use Lava Hounds. Remember? No Lava Hounds on the Too Late for Shiver side. Or P.E.K.K.A.s. And so instead... He swaps out and goes for Rocket Bloons. And he's gonna try to do... A Zap Lalo, but without the Lava Hounds. It's a, it's a Rocket Low. Ro Zap Rocket Low. I don't know what to call this. <laughs> it's just lots of balloons. Lots and lots of balloons. But if the other side of the base, they're going with the Log Launcher instead of blimping the Town Hall. Or do something to have the Siege Machine take the Town Hall. But that should get out a couple of the internal targets here. So the King getting uh, taken out right there. A little 20 on his giant gauntlet. A little 14 on the Frozen Arrow. And level 17 on the RC equipment. So uh, there was a big criticism that I, I think we definitely need to talk about for hero equipment and how much hero equipment we've been getting lately. Because we obviously got the big wave of new equipment when Town Hall 16 released. Then we ended up getting two pieces of epic equipment. And now we're getting the world champion equipment as well. And I feel like we're out of the common equipment now. Now every hero has two pieces of common equipment. I don't know what they plan to do with that ninth level on the blacksmith because right now they just added extra two levels for the hog equipment or for the for the road champion equipment, I mean, onto the blacksmith for level seven and eight. And so level nine still has room for another piece of equipment there that they could just slip in wherever they want. Maybe they use that for another hero down the line. I have no idea what the, what the plan would be for that, but... Not, not saying there's a new hero. I don't know anything about that. Um, he's kind of missing his town hall, though. We're going to have a problem here. Um, see the spear fox right there working out. RC's working out. Okay, he's got it. And then he steps away. It actually works out better because now he doesn't get hit by the poison since he had to turn back for it. He's got to get the rocket boost to get some of these other defenses under control, though. How's the RC doing? RC going off to the left there. Freeze up the ricochet cannon. Save that spear fox. No, spear fox is already down. Need to pop the RC ability to get this ricochet cannon out of the way here. But Rocket Blue surged to the right side. And they end up not be able to get past that defensive queen. I don't know if he's got this right now. He throws everything he's got into the under the onto the scatter shot there, but he can't get through the ricochet cannon either. It's gonna be a defense here, guys. 
the first miss of the war and maybe some lava hounds would have done some work here but defensive queen stain stand with a scatter shot obviously stopped his attack in his tracks so if you guys remember that video right there from when they announced the year of the dragon you can see that the warden had this new pieces of equipment right here that he used and so i imagine that after we end up getting that piece of equipment released to the game that we're going to have a slowdown in new equipment for a while maybe another piece of world champion equipment with a future event after that but i i think that we're probably gonna have a chance to be able to catch up a little bit on equipment because all the common equipment will be released and we'll have an idea of which ones we should actually upgrade and then once all the common equipment is out then the only time we get new equipment is during events and usually events end up just dumping a whole bunch of ore on us anyways and so we end up getting an ability to upgrade all a lot of equipment with that regardless so i think it will ultimately balance out in the long term but for now it feels like you're a little bit overwhelming how fast we're getting equipment just because we're still trying to catch up with the initial wave of equipment from the launch of town hall 16. so i think we will have a slowdown i think we will have a chance to be able to catch it all up there we just got to be patient and uh let let the let the dust settle for a little bit tile 16 still new stars making his way through the town hall here flame was able to clear out the top of the base there king was able to dive into the left side and queen up on the top of the base there pretty strong setup here all around or champion picking up wherever the king left off over to the left side of the base and looking like it's like you did like a double wall break here we missed the start of the attack there while i was looking at that clip there of the warden equipment but yeah that was in supercell's official video there and so they either leaked it intentionally or leaked it on purpose. Um, maybe their marketing team leaked it before they had a chance to really announce it. And so, I don't know, but it's out there. And so we can talk about it. And <laughs> what we can also talk about is the fact that Navi's going for a perfect war right now if we see a triple out of clouds. Here's that warden leak one more time so we can see what's coming. It's like he throws like a giant fireball when he pops his ability. It's pretty insane pretty insane not gonna lie that's in slow motion but i don't know how useful that one will be i i guess we'll find out when whenever they release it in the game maybe it's in early stages of development when they release that uh, video here because obviously we don't have it yet but we only have the ward and the world champion that'll still need an epic piece of equipment there and then after that i feel like we could then start to cycle back to the king and the queen I guess and we'll see what they come up with after that but as it stands for now I feel like they would want to slow down a little bit there and at least we're not getting all of our common equipment pile on top of the epic equipment that we can just choose two pieces of equipment that we really like and start to level those up and so people can start to choose their preferences you know I think it'll balance out here we go Chessence is in Chessence is going with super dragons on this one and I mean they can't use Lalu so uh, they can't have lava hounds so uh, he's gonna stay, stay away from the asteroid. He's just stick with something a little bit more simple. And Super Dragons are getting a new level with, or not a new level, they're getting a buff on their HP with the update. So are regular dragons and so are Electro Dragons. So it's kind of weird that they're, they're increasing the power of the air spam attacks at the same time that they're nerfing the ground spam with the Root Riders, you know? Like they're just gonna, they're maybe gonna end up shifting the meta a little bit there towards the air. But then I guess also they'll probably shift the meta towards hogs as well. I feel like with the new level of hog riders, the hog riders are going to make a, a big resurgence. And if you are like a, a player like Synthe or anybody like that who likes to break out the the Skelly Donut twin hogs or Zap twin hogs or any of the hog miner hybrid attacks there, because miners, miners also got a new level, but they have been largely neglected since uh, Town Hall 16 came out because Root Riders have just ended up being so much better as a ground attack and then Lalo overshadows all of it with the new level of Blooms. But I feel like the new level of the Hogs could bring back a lot of those attacks, especially with the new level on the Siege Breaks that makes it spawns two P.E.K.K.A.s now. So a quick and easy pickup here for Chessens. Gets it done with the Dragons. And now it's time to see if Klaus can get Navi the Perfect War. So what would Klaus do if he's not allowed to use healers and he's not allowed to use Root Riders? Do you think he breaks out the Lalo? I guess we're going to find out right now. Here we go. The final attack of the war going for the win. And Klaus is, of course, going to be breaking out the Lalo. Looks like he's going to do a blizzard. All right. 
Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold up, hold up. Look, look what we have. Oh, okay. He swapped out a siege machine. I thought he was going to do a battle drill <laughs> with the invisibility to deliver it. But he's going for Rage Gem on the Warden. Here comes a blip. He's got enough invisibility to support a super wizard drop here. Going for the blizzard. Takes it with the ward ability. Goes all the way in and will land it right on top of the race tower taking out both of the multi infernos both of the multi archer towers or none of that because it died what what klaus what do you do all right well <laughs> did he land out a bunch of small bombs was that trapped I think I was trapped. There's just enough room in that compartment for four small bombs. And that will kill the super wizards. But Klaus quickly identifies that they died and then stopped casting spells. So go on for right for that. But let's go ahead and dive to the other side of the base here as he drives his queen in to go get the town hall down. Using the frozen arrow, locking out the defensive king. Got ground skelly swarming. Klaus still pumping levels into that frozen arrow he was lagging behind the rest of his team there for a bit as he was running the archer puppet for quite a while but it looks like he finally got that frozen arrow up to level 17 and making a little bit of progress to catch up with the rest of his team on the on the uh, frozen arrow equipment so definitely you can see that he is finally breaking out here for the very first time maybe that's enough to get him through but he needs to get the town hall down he does right there with the queen out of pop our ability blooms in for the left side of the base there and he did still get a pretty decent amount on the far right side like well, what actually finished that area off there he put the word champion in that area he used her right he used the word champion she was able to clear out the top of the base there and pick up out some of the defenses that the balloons ended up missing but missing out on that kind of value and then having to go in as a backup to clear that area out here is obviously hindered his attack greatly and i don't think he gets even close on this one i think he's gonna leave up the entire core and i think that that means that navi is at threat of losing luckily this is not an elimination match this is the early stages of the tournament and so they're just playing through group stages right now but my goodness <laughs> oh no klaus <laughs> oh geez 77 percent I want to see that blimp again. I got to see that blimp again. Let's see what happened to it. <laughs> Chesson's OP on defense. Had the, had the base that shuts Klaus down. There we go. There we go. Into the base we go with that blimp. Slow down. The blimp itself is invulnerable, but there's the drop. And right there. Right there. One, two small bombs. One, two on the bottom. One, two on top. There were four small bombs in that compartment and the super wizards get wrecked. Nice base building. Nice base building. Shuts him down. But now, now the war is on the line. Kairos in for too late for Shiver. And they have to triple. It's their only way to make the comeback in this war. It has to be a triple. Nothing else will do. And he decides to go in with his own variation of Lala. But remember, they're not allowed to use Lava Hounds. So he has three Dragon Riders instead. And the alteration of uh, traditional Lalo is what caused the last miss there for his team. So we'll see how this one ends up going. But the King will make his way in, secure the tower takedown. Keep on moving under the Phoenix there to get this multi-archer tower softened up a bit there for the World Champion. And put in a battle drill right there with the world champion as well. Battle drill will take stuns, just like the diggy would normally do with her. And then eventually drop out some tanking as well. But she needs to go invisible here from the single inferno. She will. And she will stay protected. There's the battle drill getting the stun. And she comes out of the invisibility. And he will power through that. Opens up into an extra drag. A couple of rocket balloons pop out of there. And the world champion would like to get the Ziggler artillery down. That would be a very, very high value target. And she does take it with the assistance of the dragon riders. And here comes more in from the top with the balloons. Dragon Riders and Lalo mixed together. He pops the word ability, protecting the Headhunters to go in and get the defensive queen out of the way. Down south, looks like he did run Healer Puppet on his queen, but that only protected him for a little bit. This dude crossed through the middle of the base there. Let's hope that they'd clear some traps on their way through. Down to three blooms left on standby here. More blooms in the backside of the base here, hitting some red air bombs. 
Does he have any more Dragon Riders? He's got one. No, he's got two. He's got two Dragon Riders here working on the inside of the base here. Skeletal Spell shutting down the defenses. He's got the Freeze, but he's going to have to swing to the outside of the base here. He's taking a detour through the Teslas. This is going to be close here. There goes a Black Air Bomb taking out one of the Dragon Riders. More Black Air Bombs hitting the Bloons. One Dragon Rider still in the mix there, but it takes the lead, and it's getting targeted now. Can he get through? He's very, very close right now. Freezes the last couple defenses. He's got 50 seconds here. He's looking pretty good. Black Air Bomb still hitting troops. He's got one Tesla. Dragon Rider step into it. Warden steps into it. Defenses that can fight back are down. And a Black Air Bomb goes off and hits the last Dragon Rider. That's going to cost him time. Time. He has time, though. He's got time. I see three buildings left. I see three buildings right in front of him. I see three buildings going down. And I see a win going in for too late for Shiver. Navi ends up losing on percentage as too late for Shiver had that earlier slip up, but it does not cost him in the end there as they end up getting that monster defense against Klaus. So GG to too late for Shiver. And guys, we got another update sneak peek coming tomorrow so make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel and you like this video because uh we got some good stuff coming for you